Project Mopar people. Well, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. It's time. Hopefully you saw my last video of me showing off these sweet headers. Today's the day or the start of the day or the first day of the series of shoehorning that into here. It had miles of room with no headers, but these are the biggest big tube TTI headers that they make. And if you missed the other video, I mentioned in that video that I didn't want to have to buy two sets of headers in case I ever grew up to a stroker engine. So these will work well with what I'm doing. And I'll be able to someday go big. I moved my center link out of the way and I got my new transmission in place. Uh, I may go ahead and bring the transmission back down and further back just a little bit. I just kind of pinned it to the floor pan under there so it wouldn't fall out. I got to stab my torque converter. I've got my mini starter ready and bolt. The bolt and the driver side header have to go in together. It's what Mopar Jeff said and I believe he's right. There's no way of getting much of anything through here. So I will get these wrapped up. I think he said the passenger side will slip in from the bottom really easily later but what i'm going to do is try to uh, strap both of them in place after i get my converter in and then slowly lower the engine down i don't have the transmission cross member in yet it's just sitting on that jack so anything could happen there uh, so yeah we might as well get started more people are interested in seeing this engine in this car than probably anything else I've ever done on the channel. And if you're new, I do have four dyno videos with this 406 on there. It should do exciting things in here. Um, I'm gonna run some elephant ears and I'll need to put my tabs on for those, but I had to go ahead and shoot my purple paint um, while I had the time. So. I'll stop talking and go to work. I have my, remember this is a stock cast crank 400. So I have here my uh, flex plate and you'll see the little tiny E and D for, that is from Ed's machine. He balanced that with the crank and the assembly. So it is race balanced now. It's still external, but it's very nice. Uh, probably much nicer than most internal balance cranks that you buy uh, unless you had those balanced but here I have a PTC nine and a half inch converter uh, this one came from Mr. Darren Blake so I've never ran it before uh, but I fully expect it may have to come in and out two or three times to be restalled that's just part of racing so I'll get this mounted onto my engine uh, headers wrapped up and hung into place and I'll bring you back whenever we are sliding that engine around. Well, everything's in its happy home, mostly. I still need to attach my starter into that bundle of bubble wrap there. These are wire tied to the torsion bars. And I think it says in the directions, uh, take out the torsion bars, but they probably mean for the people who are starting uh, or installing these with the engine in. So we're just gonna roll with it. I can lift this and pull it over a few inches if I need to. Uh, but right now I have the both sides torsion bar. That one is a steering shaft actually. So we'll see about it. And then underneath, you can see these beautiful collectors. Uh, I just went through a bolt hole to the torsion bar and same thing bolt hole torsion bar so they're just kind of hanging out but there, there's some pretty good adjustability there um, i'm just gonna have to slowly start getting the engine in and see what's what still don't have this cross member in so you can see how much all that can still move around and i may need a lower you just never know but converters in went went in real smoothly i didn't even film it um, if I would have turned the camera on, it probably would have took me 45 minutes. But those big, beautiful headers look good hanging down, don't they? Let me hook to our 
406 and get her spun around. So if that'll stop swinging around, we got a little bit here. This looks okay. It can rock back some. And a mile on this side. I better pull those plugs out right now for fun. They'll be breaking off and not making uh, anything happy go on here. Also get it down low enough, I'll throw my floor jack and a block of wood under it just to level it up just a little bit. But I took off about a quarter inch of that lip right there for my grinder before I did my painting and such. here if she'll be nice and go in that'd be great my tight side. Easy. Air trigger. I went ahead and backed my transmission up and down just a little bit. I unstrapped that starter so that it could set in the gap like the groove of the block instead of being wire tied hardcore to the header itself. So now I got space here. I got space here. At least she wants to touch, but she's not. And the engine kind of rocks. It's setting mostly on the pan and the jack. So I'm gonna ease that jack down. This one keeps a little bit of weight. So I'm just gonna work them back and forth. So the crane is my safety. Easy. We're looking good right there. Um, that got tight again. So I'll let my crane down. See what that does. A little bit looser. Let my jack down. Well, let me look. I know there's a lot of bouncing back and forth here. So far, so great. I mean, 
Oh. Would you look at it? Dynamite. Okay. So, if I can keep that rock between those two headers, just like that, let my jack down. That one. Bring it back some. But the whole thing's got to go down about an inch. Day number two, I had to quit last night and quite abruptly blocked this thing up so it wouldn't fall to its death. I threw a light under there, but I got a jack stand with a couple blocks holding the back of the oil pan. I got a jack and more blocks under the oil pan. I've got the transmission jack under the transmission still, but <sighs> we're real close. You can see that. Uh, three quarter inch. So either the transmission goes down or the engine goes up in the rear. And it looks like my head, they're just almost touching the firewall. They're not. So I'm so very close. This header is like, you know, needs to move forward just uh, about an inch. I can move this goofy block of wood out of the way. It was just a safety thing. See, it's loose, not doing anything. I just didn't, I didn't want to come back today and it be uh, falling all the way down to the bottom of wherever land. So I'm gonna get her bolted up, see what happens. My Harbor Freight hoist, it gives it up after about five minutes and it just go ahead and slowly creeps down, creeps down, creeps down. So seeing that it's loose right now, I can probably uh, just shove it backwards like that and uh, jack up. It'll we go real slow. It may just line everything up, make, make it all happy for me here. And I bet you almost, I can almost get these bolts in the front side of the block, pull that transmission up. Just a little bit cattywampus. Transmission cross member with a couple bolts. And then the two bolts coming from the bottom, like that. It kept my transmission from sliding back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I think part of my problem earlier was I would drop the engine in, the transmission would come back. So as soon as I did this, it gave me some more stability and moved the transmission forward just a little bit. I got the top two bell housing bolts in, nice and snug. And the one on that far side, right there. And they're so easy to access. I mean, that's, that may be easier than the small block ones uh, during that fun. But I know I'll probably have to pull that one out to run a dipstick tube later, but it's holding it all together now. And my headers, see how beautifully free that one is. I think I can go ahead and just get it hung on a couple bolts. If it doesn't fall out of there. And then play with this one some. It's loose, but I got to get that starter put on, remember? And it's very hard to see the starter with all the bubble wrap in place. Um, I know a lot of guys like masking tape and all that. I just didn't have a roll here and I figured this would uh, be better than nothing. So I'm gonna get a, a header hung up. I added this little goofy piece of chain here to kind of pull straighter in the back. But I wanna readjust my jack underneath also. Transmission jack is out, it's just uh, it's down there and I may move it under the oil pan with a nice uh, big block of wood So it'll get a uh, better distribution Under the pan instead of my little uh, What you call it jack there, so let me keep going up here Be sure all the weight is on that chain There's no weight on this and I'll get this out of the way. 
I figured if I'm gonna have any kind of strain or stress on these headers, I might as well have all the bolts in so it doesn't do something bad to the threads of my um, aluminum heads. And I thought I'd go ahead and put my gasket in. I use these on the dyno. If you can see, they are like a multi-layer aluminum. I like to put the flat side towards the head and let the header smash into this side. But those big thick flanges are gonna be larger than what I used to have on here. And I think they'll be basically leak proof. I may have to go through and retorque them a couple times because that's what you have to do. But they were nice and slotted those holes there. So you could put those bolts in any old time, I guess. I dig it. Yeah, there we go. These are more fun, but not as bad as I thought. I think spark plugs are going to be the major PETA. Joe is pulling the rocker arms and checking what they look like because they're 440 source rockers and I've gotten a lot of warnings about them. So this is the first check after they've been on the dyno. I've been putting the spark plugs in this side and this number six spark plug has been the hardest thing in the world. You can get your fingers like here and I can get my fingers like that, but I then have to take a three quarter wrench and get on the end of my socket. So in the future, I may cheat and drill me a little hole right there. If I ever take this engine out, that would be in line with that, that I could stick an extension through here somewhere. If you could just stick an extension in a and a ratchet that would be a lot faster but the other three have been a breeze so i'll bring y'all back and show you what that looks like after i get my ears mounted and we're using the instructions to center the crankshaft between the frame rails and up and down okay so here it is in place carburetor is bolted up throttle linkage springs uh you'll notice i have my fast easy run distributor here and it's a little bit different hookup than uh, the MSD that I had. It basically just takes a one white wire that goes to the, the fast ignition inside. I like that stuff. Um, there's a coil that matches it. That's what I ran yet last year. Super consistent. Had great luck with that. I got to get the coil mounted up here somewhere. Um, I did go ahead and find number one. Top dead center. Marked it over here. All that's good. Elephant ears are in. They're bolted right now. If you if you ever see an A-body, there's, there's a lip that hangs in right here about three quarter to an inch. And that's what, we shot two bolts in here. And I got a three H bolt running that way where that lip goes up. And if you've ever pulled the inner fenders out, you'll know that, I'll just show you. From the inside, see we're double lipped here. So that will, I think, it should be enough to keep it from rocking and rolling, doing all that. Uh, same thing on that side. Uh, very sturdy. I mean, I, when I let my jack down, I went ahead and measured. So they give you a measurement from the center of the crank to the top of your K-member. And I think that's five and a quarter. Remember our destructions earlier? So I've got that perfect. Um, on my header fitment, here's the close spot, right 
right there. And you can see the daylight. I've got an eighth of an inch at least. So that's beautiful. I really, really, really like it. Um, the headers have been a medium pain to get in, do all that stuff. The wires, uh, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, that one has a 45 on it. This will be a straight boot. It, it'll be fine. The front two, I uh, put 90s on, about that side, and I just got them plugged on here, so they'll run smoothly underneath. Um, my alternator, I'll probably mount low here, make myself a bracket later, even if I come off the water pump, come off that ear. I'm not worried about the alternator right now. Um, we're playing with the radiator stuff. And let me slide under it so you can see more of the header fitment. So where the they had their pipes coming they're angled in just a little bit if you saw the last video and it makes sense now so that big thing will clear everything just fine there's my polyurethane mount uh, shifters hooked up i don't know if i like the angle of this i may have to do something different with this bracket later but um shifter feels nice from the inside transmission lines uh i ran that one over the old ugly torsion bar and just wire tied it to that brake line but Lots of room there, room there. I think my close spot may be, so you can see my other wire tie to keep that line off there. Uh, the top side of this tube, you see my fingers? That's a pretty tight spot. I'm gonna say it's, I don't know, a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. So if the engine ever did move or something, which in theory it shouldn't, uh, it could touch. Here's uh, from the bottom side of these tubes. Everything's just filed in so nicely. I mean, it's... See that air gap there between the box and that? Um, tight, tight, tight. There's my starter in there somewhere. Um, so we did learn a lesson of put your starter wires on before bolting the starter in because it had to come back off. Um, I don't really have many scratches on these dudes. Let me come to this side. The dipstick tube was a pain um, over and over again, but it's super clear now. And that could just be part of the big block swap of it. I still have my piece of leather over here, but everything's clear. There's that torsion bar. I need to move that black plastic line, um, which it's only plastic on the outside. Steering here, I undid my center link so it would slide easily under the bottom. Um, and it goes back, cycles back and forth just fine, clear. My fuel line, I want to get it over a little bit more just to be safe. And yeah, I mean, it's, I'm almost ready to start this dude. While we're under here, I might as well show you. Um, I got a new Denny's drive shaft from Michael Yielding. And he had this in his um, five second. The car probably actually runs high fours. Um, he had it in his car, so I figured it'll be f plenty good for mine, and it's a much smaller diameter than uh, the one that I had in here, so I lost a little bit of weight going with this drive shaft. It's had to, have, had to be shortened and rebalanced, but that's all good. Um, let's go back up to the top. Uh, Mr. Rick Seaman called me after he saw my picture and said I should probably replace these with studs. Um, so I may do that sometime soon. I've seen them ran before a lot just with bolts. These are grade 8 bolts. Joe went and got some good bolts for me. Uh, but they're in. I mean, it's, here's our clearance over here. I can probably go ahead and move that piece of leather soon. I just was trying to protect stuff. Uh, get you a shot through there. I mean, it's tight, but it's nice. Like, I can shove a finger in there. The number six spark plug took me 15 minutes to put in. So don't expect a quick plug change at the racetrack on that one. So I was sure it's a nice new plug. Everything's wonderful. We did reset the valves. I don't know if I told you that in this video yet or not. Um, so all that's good to go. It's basically ready to start soon. Uh, Joe's going to get me a bottom radiator hose and you're going to laugh make fun of me about this but here's my radiator and the outlet is on the bottom on the wrong side 
the top won't be a big deal. You could go either side with it. Uh, so we're gonna have to do kind of a loopy hose and go in there. And I may buy a new $120 uh, eBay radiator sometime, I'll see. Uh, I gotta hook up my coil. I wanna get my AFR meter hooked up. Also, I have not put any exhaust on this. Uh, lots of little stuff to do. Radiator's in. I got a pretty trick bottom hose. But there she be. Um, everything's clear off the headers. I gotta put some wire ties on these wires, but none of them are touching. Yeah, 45 straight, 90, 90. I got my earmuffs on because this is about to be loud. Got my half inch ready. Uh, my idle's probably fine. I have got fuel up to this point. You can see it's wet in there. I'm not gonna pump it much more. And we should be about 20 degrees. You can see I have that turned about that far back before the zero start us off with. So somewhere around there. See if it runs. That's it. I got to go in the house. Car runs great, plenty of oil pressure. Everything's good. So I appreciate y'all watching and come back if you want to go to the races. So here's Mopar Joe and